I've got a couple of two by fours in here, something to set the cutter head on once it gets in. But first, I might need the outfeed roller. No, I should be able to do that. I should be all right. Okay. That's how I took it out anyway. <laughs> I took the outfeed and in, infeed and outfeed rollers off after the cutter head, if I'm not mistaken. So, yep. All right. So what I'm going to do is basically squeeze the cutter head in over here, lay it on the two by fours, kind of get things lined up over there, drop my bolts in place, and then we just have to get the bearing to seat on that end and get the gearbox situated over here. All right, a little bit of a note here. So right here, I should have been actually installing the chip deflector first. And I outline all this later. I kind of go over it a little bit more depth, but for various reasons, I should have been installing the chip breaker here first. And then, well, the order after that isn't quite as important, but then I probably would have done the outfeed roller, the main cutter head, and then the infeed roller. Again, I kind of outline that a little bit, but for those of you that don't actually watch all of it, look at you, just keep an eye out for that. So just in case you don't, you know, catch that part later in the video, that is a different order than what I initially set out to do as I will show you eventually. All right. Well, there goes one bolt. Oops. Okay. I can already see I'm gonna have to trim a little bit of that gasket first. Cause that sticks out the side just a hair. There's one bolt that dropped. That one dropped. This one is. That one did. And that one's good. All right. Let me go ahead and tighten these up. And that'll hold the gearbox where it's supposed to be. For a second there, I looked at that and I was like, oh no, the cutter head is moot. It's supposed to be. Okay, I'm gonna raise this all the way up. And I think I will do the outfeed roller next. So this one is really hard to film. So what I'm going to do is kind of show you some of the pieces parts. So these are what hold the blocks for the feed rollers up. The in-feed and the out-feed have the same bracket. I've installed three of them. This is the last one. And there's just that little set screw with a lock nut on it. And that's how you raise it up to adjust the height of it. And the part that's hard to see is the rest of it. <laughs> Let me go ahead and get this one installed over here while I talk about this. So there's two blocks on either end of the infeed rollers that have like a little brass bushing or bronze bushing on the inside. And they kind of just free float. And the reason they free float is because then if you need to, I mean, when you feed the board in, you want to have some downward pressure, which is done with some springs 
that load in from the top. From the top. See, I lied. This one doesn't have brass on the inside. These are just, um, it's kind of a soft metal. I'm not exactly sure what type, but um, so these are the blocks that eventually go in here. And then these springs actually load from the top and they kind of sit in this little recess here and that's kind of what keeps it in place this way side to side. And then there's also a little cap that goes up here that will be the way that you set the actual spring tension. And the interesting thing is that there's actually a hole in the top of the block that lets you oil this bearing surface. And now just keep in mind that these aren't super high speeds or anything. These are geared way down because this is what actually feeds the board through. And I think it's, I can't remember if it's 16 or 32, something like that, uh, feet per minute. So it's not super fast, but that is essentially all there is to that. And I will get my other block here to have those ready. And the obnoxious thing is, is this is basically going to be a from the bottom up type of operation. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> see you in a minute or two. And I did check the uh, gearing goes on the gearbox side. So the long shaft ends up on the gearbox side. And I can already see that I screwed this up. <laughs> So I'm going to pull the blocks on these ends because apparently I can only have one of them or at least need to get them swung out of the way. <laughs> it's funny the things that you remember after you <laughs> run into them because I remember that this is essentially how I had to install all of these as well. Okay. It actually looks like I'm gonna have to take some of this off. This whole thing, I tell you. Question is whether or not that is enough. I hope it is. It seems to be. All right. Now I'll get these two springs down in there and you can kind of tell when they're in there correctly because they'll kind of sink down a little bit further there we go and see how it kind of won't wiggle out anymore perfect now i just got to get the other one in now i can tighten this up again now before i go too far on unwrapping the cutter head I'm going to do the infeed roller. Infeed roller, very much the same, but slightly more accessible. Before I get too far into that, I'm going to put a little light oil down into those just to make sure that I can get those lubricated the way they should be. For this first one, I'm just going to do it straight into the top here, um, even though technically what you can do is just uh, drop some oil in through the top up here, which I guess I might as well do. And then that'll kind of just gravity feed down in there and uh, get every keep everything all lubed up. Oh yeah, look at that one go. That this, These barely moved when I got the machine so that's pretty sweet that almost makes it feel like all this time was worth it all right also don't forget that uh, these little things plugs go on the top for holding those springs in and then also holding the spring tension and there's a definite top and bottom so there is a hex on the top just a hole on the bottom hole goes down 
there is a hole through the hex that uh, goes in so you're going to keep adding oil without having to unset your spring tension every time. I might have to put a plug in these somehow because when I took those out I didn't know there was a hole in them until I started cleaning them and just trying to clean some of the gunk out of there. As you can imagine oil if you're trying to keep the bearings happy and then sawdust all over everywhere. Those got pretty gunked up. And I'm just going to drive these in until they're basically flush for now and then I'll worry about in feed and out feed tension once I actually get this thing running so that we can deal with getting that all squared away. That's where I thought I was anyway. Where I am now is with the in feed roller and it's accoutrement sitting on the bench again and the gearbox is down again and the cutter head is out of its bearing again <laughs> so yeah um, not ideal but i learned an important lesson when you switch this planer from the straight cutter head with the three knives to a helical head segmented this does not fit unless you do it before you install the cutter head so that's fun and basically this is a chip deflector of sorts that'll chuck the chips back up this way once they come up and off and the shoot for the dust collection comes out this side so that's that's what that is it'll kind of redirect those chips back out the back of the machine and uh yeah <laughs> Cool, so there's a bar that will go from over there to over here that kind of threads through here that will hold that up in place. So I'm going to get that installed and then put the cutter head back in and then it'll be a lot more obnoxious, but I'll put the in-feed roller back in and then I'll be back to where I was 15 minutes ago. All right, this one, I think we're gonna roll the time lapse for. <laughs> All right, so that was fun. Now we're back to slightly beyond where we were half an hour ago. So I've got the top chip deflector in, I've got the piece that holds that in. I did remember <laughs> a little later, but in here there's a threaded rod that goes all the way through and that comes over to this side and it is the locking knob to lock the post in place. That actually holds the front of the chip deflector in place. So way back down in there, there's a little round part that that threads all the way through. I mean, it doesn't thread, it's, it slides all the way through. So the obnoxious thing that I didn't realize until I started doing it is that in order for that piece to be where it needs to be, these actually have to be pushed back behind that. So that actually holds those flat so that before they kind of flipped down further than they were supposed to, but these actually get held back by that chip breaker and so I had to oh man I had to mess around with it for a while just to get all of these back where they were supposed to be so that this rod that goes all the way through would actually thread well thread would actually slide through and come out the other side where it was supposed to in a way that I could still you know actually use it so yeah that sucked <laughs> but I guess it's a, a lesson learned Alrighty, time to fill up the gearbox and this is the fill port. <laughs> Realizing that this probably would have been a little bit easier had I not installed all this stuff yet. So if you're going to be uh, doing something along these lines, probably not a bad idea to wait <laughs> to install your in-feed roller 
until after you've filled your uh, gearbox. Anyway, I don't feel like taking this out, so what I'm going to do is I have, I'm just using ADW90 uh, gear oil, that's kind of what it, one main thing that I was recommended, and I put this little piece of hose on it, it's like a hard plastic, it actually came from a dehumidifier, and what I'm going to do is actually sneak it down through next to the uh, chip deflector there, and then I can feed that into there, and essentially you just fill it up until it comes out that port, so I've got paper towel here and a couple more paper towels up there that I'll be able to use to clean up. So. And we're full. <laughs> Whoop. All right, and I've just got the plug here and I've got the yellow, well it's white Teflon tape, but the stuff meant for oil and petroleum products. Let's see if I can find the right sized wrench. Not that one. Should be able to tighten this down. Good news is I don't see any leaks around the gasket yet. Which there is an oil seal on the inside of that. So other side of this bearing has an oil seal and then there's an oil seal up by the cutter head but there is obviously no oil up that far to the cutter head because that's right about here and this is the other piece that has a little o-ring oil seal inside of here and so far I mean I can see that it's not leaking there so I guess I'm just going to let that sit for a little while probably go play some saxophone and come back to it and see whether or not it leaked but now we kind of get a better picture of what this thing is going to look like when I start getting this stuff filled out so next thing next day it will be uh, starting to get some of that assembled getting the chain drive on this end and all those sprockets should be the next thing up I think <laughs> 